In this art history video, we'll dive into the world of the post-impressionist artist, Paul Cezanne, who many famous artists considered a genius. Cezanne explored geometric form and color in a new way, and artists learned from Cezanne that color could alter the structure of an object. Cezanne came onto the art scene in Paris in the late 1860s, at the same time Claude Monet and the Impressionists were starting to disrupt traditional ways of making art. Unlike Monet, who painted soft, fluid brushstrokes depicting reflections of light, Cezanne painted with a more architectural style, creating a structural order to his forms. Cezanne went beyond the way Impressionists portrayed light and color and explored depth and perspective through color. Like the Impressionists, Cezanne's works were rejected from the Paris Salon, and his works were first shown in the Salon of the Refused in 1863. Cezanne admired the works of other painters who had been rejected from the Salon, especially those of the painter, Edouard Manet. Like many of the other works rejected by the Paris Salon, Cezanne's work gave the appearance of being incomplete. His work also distorted traditional realistic perspective. Audiences made fun of his work for this and his work's simplicity and flatness. But Cezanne was in fact challenging audiences to view his landscapes, portraits, and still lives in a new and different way. To peer into another world where viewers could see how color creates form. And to show a more playful way of seeing everyday objects, questioning the viewers to think about the way they see perspective and three-dimensional objects on a two-dimensional canvas. Cezanne is considered a post-impressionist artist today because he went beyond how the impressionists focused on light and thought more about structural form and space. And it was in 1895 that audiences began to see the genius of his work when Parisian art dealer Ambrose Foulard gave him his first solo art exhibition. Now we've learned that many modernist artists during this time and later on shocked audiences and were even mocked. So how did their work eventually become so well respected and valued? With the support of a few key art dealers and collectors who against public opinion saw the genius of their work and began to evangelize audiences. The American novelist Gertrude Stein and her brother Leo Stein were two collectors who took an interest in Villard's gallery. And in particular, Cezanne's work. The Steins not only collected art, but hosted gatherings with artists and novelists, including artists Pablo Picasso and Henri Matisse. And also the novelists Ernest Hemingway and F. Scott Fitzgerald, among others. Artists gathered together in the Stein home, bringing together modernist ideas. They wanted to bring ideas to the public through art that changed current ways of thinking. And in 1912, the Steins invited another American art collector into their home, Alfred C. Barnes. Barnes had made his fortune in pharmaceuticals and as a millionaire at the age of 35, decided to collect art. Barnes came to know Cezanne through the Vollard Gallery and quickly began to collect his work. Barnes later created a foundation for his art and exhibited his collection in America in 1923. But as in Europe, American audiences were not ready for the new and different style and panned his exhibit. Nevertheless, Barnes continued to push his opinions on art, and today his collection is valued at some $65 billion. So what was it about Cezanne's work that collectors and other artists loved? It was his approach to color, form, and perspective. Cezanne's approach to painting form and color were extremely different. Early on, he even created a series of paintings with a palette knife rather than an actual paintbrush. He expressed himself and signified something emotional in his art in this way. But it was also his arrangements of objects in space to create perspective. Each stroke had a meaning in his work and allowed him to construct his paintings with a sculptural quality. He began to challenge the way viewers saw depth and dimension, and purposely flattened his work to play with the way viewers saw perspective. Notice how Cezanne builds forms with color and depth through gradations of color, 
and creates dimensions by organizing layers of color. Cezanne's use of color and his short, flat brushstrokes bring together form and perspective in an innovative way. The flatness of his work demands our attention as we try and interpret space and volume. Cezanne developed his own kind of pictorial language that was different than the Impressionists. While Cezanne often painted in isolation, he did share with the Impressionists a fondness for painting outdoors. And in 1906, when painting outdoors, he was suddenly hit by a storm. After making his way home after the storm hit, Cezanne unfortunately fell ill with pneumonia, and just a few days later died at the age of 67. But Cezanne continues to inspire us to think about the way we see life around us and to understand how color can create form in space and to create our own new way of making art. Now let's take what we've learned about Paul Cezanne and make our own art.